Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. Oh, I have more hair in my mouth. You know my wheels, they're always turning. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. Okay, we need to change this. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trisha if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back to my people, my tribe. The people that understand me, they know how much I love wool. There is quite a bit of it right back here and right back here <laughs> and right over here and things you can't see. I'm so glad to be back with you. We're doing a breed study video. Way back in the beginning of the year, I did a 15 episode breed study. I promised at that point when I was done that I would do a few more over time. I thought it would be once a month. It was nowhere near once a month because I have just had so many ideas, so many things that I wanted to do and work on and I was kind of needing a break from it too. But all that said, we're back with a breed study video and we're going on to species. There is a playlist if you want to go back to the beginning. I mentioned a while back that number 14 disappeared. I don't know how I could have deleted it without like knowing that I did it, but for whatever reason, it's gone. So as soon as this one's up, the next day I am going to replace number 14 just because it's kind of not fair that it skipped and I still had it. So I'm gonna replace it. Feel free not to watch it if you've already watched it, but hey, feel free to watch it if, again if you want to. So let's get into it. I, I brought, got my glasses out this time and my trusty Kindle, which you will all recognize. I'm using the Fleece and Fiber source book as my primary resource. That's what I used throughout the entire earlier breed study this year and I'm continuing to stick with that. If I need a backup source, I like the Spinner's Guide to Fleece. This week, we're going to be spinning mohair and we're going to spin llamas. I do have a couple other species to add to this breed study, but I don't wanna say it's gonna be in a month because I'm going to Rhinebeck, life is nutsy, cuckoo. I'm doing some extra filming right now for something not gonna be on this channel, but I know. So it's all very exciting, but it's also crazy busy. But I don't know when the next one will come out with new species because there's something else I'm about to start working on and I am so excited to share it with you. If you were on the live on Sunday, you probably already heard. This was inspired really by the breed study. There were quite a few breeds that they talked about like the washability and when I say washability, I actually mean like machine washability of different breeds. And I also saw a lot of questions about like, would this be good for socks? Would this not be good for socks? My opinion is that what makes it good for socks is if you can wash it in your washing machine, I do hand wash a lot of socks. And also if it's gonna be durable to wear without wearing out and pilling because it gets a lot of friction. So those are all things that I think about when I think about socks. And I started my wheels turning way back then. My, you know my wheels, they're always turning. Way back then I started to think about like maybe we should do a real sock kind of study just for that because so many people ask that question and I think that whether or not it's washable in your machine is valuable for more garments than just socks. I often see people saying, I've heard this is good for socks or I've seen this in person, someone saying, some repeating something they've heard but not saying that. So saying, oh, fill in the blank is great for socks. They've never tried it. They don't know, oh, you know, those kinds of things. And that's a big pet peeve of mine and I don't wanna do it to you. We're going to do some science. After this breed study video, um, the next breed study video that comes out will be part of our sock extravaganza experiment. I bought prepped fiber for four different breeds that are supposed to be great for socks. And I am going to do one at a time on my channel. We're gonna try them all out and I'm gonna run them through the paces of washing, drying, all that stuff so that we can truly see what each breed does. And at the end, I hope I'll know if all of them are great for socks, if only some of them are great for socks, if they're all great for socks, but some of the socks will need to be hand washed, all those kinds of things it's gonna be actually really fun. We're the only people on the planet, by the way, that would actually think this is fun. <laughs> because we're crazy. 
pregnancy in the best possible way. I wanted to tell you guys this early because there's a kit available in my Etsy shop for you if you wanna do this along with me. Each kit will contain two ounces and they're numbered in the order that I'm gonna go through of the four different breeds. We also have in this kit two different preps because the one of these breeds, I could not find one of these breeds in top form, so instead I bought it in roving form, but I think that's gonna be kind of great because we can also do a little bit of comparison just on the spinning portion of the two different types of prep. So just to let you know the four breeds, what you actually get in your kit, these will be undyed, and the first one is Dorset Horns. Dorset Horn is a different breed from Dorset, and I don't think we even did Dorset Horn in the breed study, if I'm not mistaken. I think, you know, it's gonna do double duty, and you get two ounces in the kit so that you can make yourself a really good sample to wash, dry, all those things. I don't wanna go too deep into what my process is gonna be right now. We'll get into that in the videos. The second video will be actually Dorset Down, which again, is a different breed. So this is the one I could only find in roving, and again, you'll get two ounces of this. I'm ridiculously ex excited for this experiment. It's gonna make awesome socks. The next, so next is two ounces of South Down. South Down is the progenitor of all the down breeds. Supposed to be great for socks, we're about to find out, and this one is also top. And last, we are gonna do Cheviot. Cheviot, I've also heard people call it. Call it what you will. So two ounces, it's top, and they are numbered, so you know what order we're gonna go through in the videos. So this is the first four that'll be available. I am seriously, weirdly, so excited to get started on these and test this out. And John and I kind of designed a loose experiment. So I hope you'll join me. If you actually want to spin along, you can find these in my Etsy shop. There is a link below. The reason I put these kits together is because if anyone is doing this type of kit for like a study type Thing, I couldn't find one so I was like well I guess I have to put my own kits together so I bought a bump of all of these I have so much wool in my house right now oh my gosh I hope we have a bad winter because I can justify some of it right on to this week's breed study so I am gonna go ahead and do a little bit give you a little bit of info on the mohair first and then we'll spin it and check out the end product uh, one thing I will say right off the bat is you guys know this mohair is not my favorite I don't hate it but i also find that it's slippery it often tends to stick to my nose and like my mouth area i guess because i'm breathing in and out and because i'm babbling so much a lot of air is coming in and out i'm just telling you the truth and i'm hoping that when i do this i'm gonna find out that i've been wrong all along honestly right away i'm finding things out i didn't know let me just start with this mohair comes from goats i don't know if everyone knows that but i do feel like it's worth saying because there could be some people who don't and the type of goats that mohair fiber comes from are both called mohair goats <laughs> see it's already doing it it's attacking me they're called both mohair and angora goats so that's an important thing because angora relating to goats can be confusing for some people. The, the root word of mohair, which I'm not even gonna try to pronounce because it's Arabic, uh, is the word for choice or select because it, it also means cloth made of goat's hair. Although to be choice, it would need to be the hair of a special goat. That's a quote. Oh wow, so I did not know this either. They originate from the Turkish capital of Ankara, if you go back far, and, and it's also the original home of Angora cats and Angora rabbits. The presence of Angora goats in Turkey has been documented since around 1500 BCE. Wow. All right, here's a good one. Adults, adults easily grow at least three quarters of an inch of fiber per month throughout the year. That's quite a bit. It says most mohair goats are shorn twice a year, so they're actually carrying at most only half the weight of a year's fleece at any given time. So there are some classing words here. Kid mohair means very fine, yearling mid-range, and adult sturdier. I am pretty darn sure this is adult. Commercial field focuses on white mohair, but there are smaller farmers that are producing colors. So they come in a range of cream and fawn, reddish browns, rich grays, and black, blacks. Blah, blah, blah and blacks, which basically covers the whole gamut. Mm. There is a huge, huge range in mohair. I mean, just the fact that kid to adult 
uh, has such a wide range of like micrometer and sturdiness, they called it in the book, that tells you right there that there's a wide range. Okay, so this is a direct quote. Although mohair is chemically similar to wool, it does not have the same type of springy elasticity that wools display because it has no crimp, although it does have waves. Then it says the fibers are elastic with the ability to stretch out by almost an extra third. That's nuts. And return to their original length. I know how you guys feel about seeing the pictures. So I'm going to show you some mohair goats. They are actually really cute. They look like they're wearing gym jams. Although you guys know how I feel about goats. <laughs> Not a fan. <laughs> Sheep, yes, goats, no. Mohair fabrics don't really wrinkle or they like resist wrinkling, so that's kind of cool. And they don't attract or hold dirt. So I'm not gonna give you all the stats on this, but it does say that for each shearing, usually twice a year, you can get anywhere from one and a half to 25 pounds based on a kid, a younger one, or an adult. And if it's like a bigger one to a littler one, that's a humongous, I mean, come on. And then it says usually 80 to 90% you get of usable fiber. Staple length goes all the way from three inches for the youngest up to six inches is like the highest for adults. Fiber diameters go from 24 for kids up to 39 for adults. So again, that is a pretty big range. And locks are distinct organized waves. They're kind of a cute curly lock. And it says it, it's really good for dyeing and, and sometimes has like a little bit of a sparkle to it. Let, there's a couple fiber prep and spinning tips. Look for a fleece that is neither too dry nor too oily. The former may be matted and dull, the dry, and the latter may be gummy and hard to clean. Interesting. It says prep can be hand or machine carded combed or spun directly from locks. I have actually seen people spin kid mohair from locks quite a bit. I mentioned in the beginning that it tends to be kind of slippery. It says right in the tips, if you're new to mohair, it may feel exceptionally slippery. Loosen the draw in on your wheel. Good advice if you're spinning something slippery. And be sure to put enough twist to hold your yarn together. <sighs> We've talked about this during the breed study many times. Because it's slippery, there's always that balance of needing a little bit more twist to hold it together and then putting too much twist in so it feels ropey. So basically it warns against that. Best known for luster, durability, length, a range of fiber diameter qualities, and versatility. That's a lot of info about mohair. I'm gonna check the staple just like I always did in the first set of videos. I'm kind of just... with long okay let's get to the end of this Woo. all right we are talking about seven inches in length I think what I'm gonna do is spin this short forward unless it's too slippery but I'm gonna try it if I can't make that work because it's too slippery I will spin it from the fold and then I am gonna brush it to see if I can raise that halo because I think that's one of the things that makes mohair all right let's go spin this So this is the mohair, it's all done. Oh my gosh, I have so much stuff on this table. I'm finished spinning the mohair and I'm gonna brush it to raise up the little ends and give it more of a halo. This is a hairbrush that I got with one of my drum carters. It was used by the previous owner to pack 
down the fibers. I use a packing brush, so I don't actually use it for that, but I've kept it in my stuff this whole time. So it's the perfect thing for this. I ended up with a lace weight and I want to try to get like all of it just to brush it and raise that halo. I'm going to go all the way around the whole nitty knotty. I'm just trying not, this is where my knot is. I'm trying not to mess up my knot right now. So and I'm going to go both directions and kind of like go underneath both directions. And then I will do the same thing over here. Look at against that dark braid, how much I raised that halo. Look at that. So cool. Oh, my table's such a mess behind me. So I finished the mohair. Oh, you can really see against my shirt how fuzzy it is when you raise that um, halo on it like that with, br with a brush. It is very fuzzy. It's 90 yards, and you guys, I can't say this exactly changed my mind about mohair, but at the same time, I did kind of enjoy this spin. There is absolutely, as there shouldn't be, no stretch to this or no bounce back to this. This is the kind of thing I would probably use for lace usually, so I wouldn't care if I had spring back or not, but it's a good thing to know about the finished yarn. And I'll be honest, I probably first time in a long time feel like, hey, maybe I will spin mohair sometimes. It's actually really, really pretty. And so it's one ounce and I got 90 yards out of it. So it is a heavier lace weight, but um, it's definitely thinner than fingering weight. So I'm really happy with this. Let's go on to the llama. Next, we will be spinning some llama and I've got it all looked up here. It does say there are three types of llamas in South America. There's one that's not woolly. There's a woolly type with a heavy fleece and fiber growing on forehead and ears, and then a third intermediate type. So I guess one that's like in the middle. North American llamas have been bred from those breeds. Like many other types of animals, it says that llamas have just like a huge, huge range. Literally, it says smorgasbord of possibilities. Anything you want, the llama can provide. So it sounds like no matter what I have, there will be like a million other options with llama, but that's still fun. They, um, they really like veggie matter, so there's always stuff stuck in their fleeces if you get a raw fleece. Very fun to work with. It can teach you a lot about fiber in general. I did not know this. It says many llamas still shed their fiber naturally, but alpacas and now in some strains, certain llamas must be short. So they can actually gather llama fiber by brushing. Llama could be a single coated or a double coated animal with like a, a harder, stronger outer coat and then a downy undercoat. Uh, it says it can be misleading types of fiber within a fleece may gradually move from finer to coarser and so that would not be a traditional double coated animal that's an animal with more than one grade of fiber on its body in a single coat fleece it's it's not the same how do you explain that it's a tough North American breeders now also offer Surrey Llama, high luster, long, fine fiber that hangs on the animal and locks, like Surrey Alpaca. Uh, they have the shine and length of guard hairs. They are bred to grow fibers with minimal medulation and no crimp. That makes them slippery as well, but you need to see the llama pictures. Can we please look at this cute face? Oh my goodness. Well, that was a lot less information. Fleece weight is, says usually two to five and a half pounds from a woolly llama, six to eight pounds from a Surrey llama. Um, staple length three to eight inches. That's a pretty wide range. Crimp varies, natural colors, white, cream, brown, grays, and black. So that pretty much covers everything. And it does say there's occasional guard hairs. Now, using llama fiber, um, it says use Dyes that'll work on wool, makes sense. Guard hairs won't show dyed colors like the finer fibers will. 
And let's see, it says you may want to use carders with fairly fine teeth, possibly cotton carders. I don't need to prep, so, but it's good info in case you guys want to. Because of the mix of fiber lengths and qualities, combing may produce a lot of waste. So what they're talking about there is that if you comb it, the shorter fibers always end up stuck in the comb. And because they're stuck in the comb with all the stuff you don't want, you usually end up throwing away those shorter fibers. So they're saying you'll mostly get off the longer ones. You'll lose a lot of the shorter ones. Oh, it does say it's nice to blend the finer stuff with Angora, fine wools, fine mohair, or silk. Hmm, llama silk. I might have some llama silk actually. <laughs> That's funny. So it also says the way you spin it should be dictated by the length of the fibers. The woolier varieties can be spun like wools with similar qualities. Um, and the sleeker fibers can be spun more like mohair or alpaca. So I guess I'm gonna be doing two that are pretty similar. I would say already that just based on what I've seen, they do seem kind of similar. It also says there's so much variety in llama fibers that basically you could find the correct type of llama fiber to make pretty much anything you want as far as crocheting, weaving, knitting, all that stuff. Let's check a staple on this llama and then we'll go spin it. I will say that just comparison wise because I said they're, they're similar, the mohair is much shinier and it also feels a lot coarser just so you guys know what I'm experiencing right now even though it sounds like you can find a llama fleece that'll be almost anything this is a little bit shorter and it it, it does kind of remind me of alpaca but it is not the same as alpaca and it is just let's see it's just six inches. It is comb top and we're gonna go with a short forward draw. I suspect I'll need a lot of twist, but if I get it right, it should have a nice drape. So let's see if I can get it right. I think I can, what do you guys think? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, woo, let's do it, ready? Hello, it's the next day and I have just finished taking the llama off my nitty knotty. Okay, I have never spun llama before. I mentioned that. I absolutely love spinning this. I would do it again. In fact, I may consider buying myself a couple pounds of this just to have in my stash. And I got 110 yards from just a shade over an ounce. It also has that pretty halo. I did brush the halo up a little bit. It's less halo than the mohair. Hang on, let me show you next to each other. The mohair, I don't know if you'll be able to see well, definitely has more halo. The llama is almost a little bit silky when you spin it and it feels silky still in my hands. And it was not hard to spin. I did set my wheel up for both of these to go really fast. I have a double drive wheel, so that means fast whirl, fast bobbin. I did not have trouble getting them to stick together, but they are a little slippery. By far, my favorite of the two is the llama. I do wanna kinda of give a caveat with that because in the book it talked about how there is just like a huge, huge, huge variation in llama fleeces, so even though I absolutely love this 100%, I don't want you guys to get the idea that you can just run out and buy a llama fleece from somewhere and that it will be the same because this had no guard hairs. It was just like silky, buttery soft, and it was so easy to spin. According to the book, you could find it with much coarser hair, you know, all those things. All the stuff I said in the beginning, I mean, you heard me say it. Next time I place an order, I think I'll just order a whole bump for my shop 
because it was amazing. Just feeling them next to each other, it's infinitely more prickly. I also had way more flyaways while I was spinning, which is something that I don't love because like I said, for whatever reason, they always get stuck and like tickle my face and make me ugh. So <laughs> did I mention that I'm crazy? I never remember to tell you guys. That. <laughs> But thank you for being with me. I hope you're going to get ready to do the Soxtravaganza spin with me for next because it's going to be fun. I can't wait to have a definitive answer for myself about each of these breeds and know for sure if I can wash them, if I can dry them, all those things. I'm so excited for it and I will see you guys soon. I love you. Bye.